Located in the heart of the central Himalayas, Chamoli in Uttarakhand seems majestic. This is the mecca of one of the most popular environmental movements of the world, the Chipko movement. Chandi Prasad Bhatt is amongst the most distinguished residents of Chamoli. He is the man who fought from the front to save the Himalayan forest from being destroyed. Born and bred in the hills, he knows what the forest meant to its people. लोगों को मालूम था कि जंगल रहेंगे तो हम रहेंगे हमारा अस्तित्व रहेगा खेतीबाड़ी वो सी पर निर्भर थी चुल्ला जंगल पर ही निर्भर था यहाँ तक कि संस्कृति भी उसके साथ जुड़ी हुई थी तो इस प्रकार के संबंध पहले थे और उसी के आधार पर जंगलों के संरक्षण संवर्धन के लिए भी लोगों की कुछ मान्यताएं थी उसी के आधार पर लोग जो गांव समुदाय था या बस्तियां थी वो उन जंगलों को बढ़ाने के कार्यक्रमों को आगे बढ़ाते थे Kalavati and her friends belong to a women's collective in Bacher village of Chamoli that has revived the village's degraded oak forest from scratch. They have been guarding the forest for many years. Not surprising that they are deeply attached to the forest. The oak tree gives them abundantly, be it fodder for cattle or manure for their fields. हमारी महिलाएं हुई है तब से ये हम लोग एक पति काटने नहीं देते हैं आज जब फुर्सत थे पहले तो कुछ कुछ काटी भी जाते हैं कुछ कुछ रह जाते हैं तो उतना हम लोगों को ध्यान नहीं था कि भाई क्या होता कैसा होता कैसे करते हैं पेड़ काटने तो जो हो रहा हो ये रहा लेकिन जब से हम महिलाएं सक्रिय हुए महिलाएं गांव में संगठन हुआ तब से हमको ये सोच आई भाई हमने अपना जंगल बचाना हमको पत्ती देता है हमको घास देता है हमारा भैंसा गोरू को चारा देता है तो इसलिए जब से ये हमने शुरुआत की है The women realize the forest is their lifeline. Just a glimpse of the village life in the hills says it all. The villagers derive so much from the land they inherit. In the early 70s, when ecologist Raymond Dasman coined the term ecosystem people, it was communities like these he was referring to, those who depended on their local ecosystem for subsistence, those who somehow lived a fulfilled life without harming the environment. And not many lived a more fulfilled life than the people dwelling in the Himalayas. Way back in 1856, Henry Ramsey, Commissioner of the Kumau and Garhwal districts, described the hill cultivators as probably better off than any peasantry in India. Nature had gifted them abundantly. Some European travellers drew parallels between the quality of life here and that of British and Irish villages. But this harmony was not meant to last forever. The Himalayan forest suffered the first blow during the mid-19th century with the building of the country's railway network. The finest stretches of Deodar and Teak forests were cut down to manufacture millions of railway sleepers. The plundering continued even post-independence. The forest paid the price to meet the increasing pressures of industrialization. Commercial forestry became the state's new mantra. Its agenda was clear, to extract as much value from land as possible. The vast stretches of oak were converted into the commercially valuable forests of pine. 
the villagers were hit hard as oak was a critical species in supporting hill agriculture. Its destruction caused long-lasting damage to the Himalayan ecology. As time moved on, the state's growing monopoly conflicted with people's ancient rights over the forests. जो परंपरागत जंगलों से लोगों की जीवनी प्रभावित होती थी उस पर बंदिश लगने लगी तो उसके कारण क्या हुआ कि फिर लोगों का जंगलों से दुराव बढ़ता गया जैसे जंगलों से हल जुआ लाठ के लिए लकड़ियाँ मिलती थी खे खेतों में गोबर में मिलाने के लिए पतियाँ मकान छाने के लिए घास फूस इत्यादि कई तो जैसे जैसे रिजर्व फॉरेस्ट होते गए लोगों के संबंध उससे करते गए In early 1973 the villagers of Chamoli requested the forest department to allot them some trees to make agricultural implements Their request was turned down Around the same time a sports manufacturing company was granted permission to cut the forest barely a few miles away It was then that things reached a breaking point. Led by activists like Chandi Prasad Bhatt and Sundarlal Bahuguna, the villagers decided to launch a mass protest. They resolved to hug the trees to prevent them from being axed. Chipko, meaning to hug, became a new slogan and it spread like a forest fire. women stepped out of homes to lead from the front they realized that this was a fight for survival hum ka hum is peed par chipke jayenge hamar peed par kore lagao par hamar peed mat kaato to unhone soche ki ha ya to khadar hai ab tab band karne to bilkul thaka ho gaye tha jangal ka kya to aapko dar nahi tha mann mein ki maan lo wo aa kar ke kuch kar ke to na humne kaha hamar jaan bhi chal jayegi par hum apne jangal ka ne denge humne unhone kaha jangal hamar hai par मैंने कहा हाँ वह पानी मिट्टी किसी के घर के नहीं है विलेज आफ्टर विलेज द फॉरेस्ट ऑफिशियल्स व फोर्स टू फ्ली बाय द विलेजर्स द मूवमेंट लास्टेड फॉर ओवर एट इयर्स इन द हिल्स ऑफ उत्तराखंड इट अचीव सिग्निफिकेंट सक्सेस इन स्टॉपिंग द ऑन स्लॉट ऑफ कमर्शियल फॉरेस्ट्री इन द हिमालयाज नियरली थ्री डेकेट्स लेटर Chipko rests in the realm of history. In the words of author Ramchandra Guha, the woods of the Himalayas still remain unquiet.